Hi, welcome back to The Basement. I'm Steve Lewis. Today we begin a two-part wrap-up of our look at the year 1986 with the months of October, November, and December. In this episode, we'll be looking at music and television, including a guest TV appearance by the Beach Boys. Next time, we'll wrap up with a look at movies, the news, a little more about music, and more about the Beach Boys. So let's begin on the first chart of the quarter, which was October 4th, 1986. Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling was in the second of its two weeks at the number one position. In the number two position was the Top Gun soundtrack, still in the top ten from the beginning of the last quarter. At number three was Run DMC's Raising Hell, in the second of its two weeks at its number three peak. At number four was Four by Huey Lewis in the News. This will go to number one on October 18th. At number five was True Blue by Madonna. It had been number one for five weeks beginning August 16th. Steve Winwood's Back in the High Life was at number six. It had gone to number three for two weeks beginning September 3rd. Billy Joel's The Bridge was in the third of four weeks at its number seven peak. And Slippery When Wet by Bon Jovi was at number eight. It'll hit number one on January 17th, 1987 and stay at number one for seven weeks. The last two albums in the top ten were two other long-running hit albums. Both of these had been in the top ten at the beginning of the third quarter. Invisible Touch by Genesis was at number nine, and at number ten was Janet Jackson's Control album. Turning to singles, the number one single in the country on October 4th was Stuck With You by Huey Lewis and the News in the last of its three weeks in the number one spot. At number two was Friends and Lovers by Carl Anderson and Gloria Loring. Gloria Loring was probably best known as Liz Chandler from the daytime soap opera Days of Our Lives. Her single with singer-actor Carl Anderson was in the last of its two weeks at number two. At number three was Janet Jackson's When I Think of You. The single will become her first number one the next week, October 11th, and stay there for two weeks. At number four was Glass Tiger's Don't Forget Me When I'm Gone, as opposed to Forgetting Me While I'm Still Here, I guess. It'll go to number two on October 11th. Daryl Hall's first solo hit, Dreamtime, was at its number five peak, and at number six was Two of Hearts by Stacey Q. With her giant baby voice, Stacey Q seemed like a day-glow Betty Boop for the 80s, though I think she was mainly meant to appeal to preteen girls. The song seemed designed to weaponize pop hooks into unwanted and unshakable earworms. It was a record that didn't care if you hated it, it just refused to be ignored. In any case, the approach will work. It'll go to number three on October 11th, becoming her first and by far biggest hit. And number seven was Throwing It All Away by Genesis. It'll hit number four on October 11th and stay there for two weeks. At number eight was Run DMC's Walk This Way, which had peaked at number four on September 27th. Their video featured Steven Tyler and Joe Perry of Aerosmith, who had also appeared on the record, of course. It was a memorable battle of the bands, with them combining forces at the end. The video helped the song become a crossover hit, and it helped revive the fortunes of Aerosmith, who had been out of the top 40 since 1978. As unlikely as it seemed in 1986, Aerosmith's run in the 70s will pale in comparison to their success in the late 80s and the 90s. This will also be Run DMC's biggest hit. At number nine was Typical Male by Tina Turner, which will spend three weeks at number two beginning October 18th. And oh, what a feeling! Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling was at number 10. The single had danced its way near the ceiling at number 2 for two weeks beginning September 13th. Top 10 singles that will come and go in the fourth quarter included Heartbeat by Don Johnson. Miami Vice had made Don Johnson a heartthrob, so naturally there was an album and a single. His hit will go to number 5 for two weeks beginning October 18th. A Matter of Trust by Billy Joel will go to number 10 on October 18th. Cindy Lauper's True Colors will go to number one for two weeks beginning October 25th. All Cried Out by Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam with Full Force, featuring Paul Anthony and Bowlegged Lou, will peak at number eight on October 25th. This single seems to sort of prefigure the ridiculously long artist credits that we often get on singles nowadays. Sweet Love by Anita Baker will hit number 10 on October 25th. Amanda by Boston will go to number one for two weeks beginning November 8th. 
Robert Palmer's follow-up to his number one Addicted to Love, I Didn't Mean to Turn You On, will reach number two behind Amanda on November 8th. Cindy Lauper had True Colors. At the same time, Madonna had True Blue, which will hit number three for three weeks beginning November 15th. In another kind of surprising return to the charts, Eddie Money's Take Me Home Tonight will go to number four on November 15th. Eddie Money had a brief vogue in the late 70s and early 80s, now he was back with what will turn out to be his biggest hit. The song interpolated Be My Baby and featured a vocal from Ronnie Spector. The Rain by Orrin Juice Jones will reach number 9 on October 15th. Human by The Human League will hit number 1 on November 22nd. Word Up by Cameo will reach number 6 for three weeks beginning November 22nd. Love Will Conquer All by Lionel Richie will spend two weeks at number 9 beginning November 29th. The Next Time I Fall by Peter Cetera with Amy Grant will go to number one on December 6th. This was the single with the haunting refrain, Next Time I Fall in Love, I'll Know Better What to Do. Next Time I Fall in Love, Ooh, Ooh, Ooh. It always made me wonder if Joey Ross from Car 54 may have co-written those lyrics. Huey Lewis in the news told us something that a lot of people had been observing for quite a while, that it had now become hip to be square. It was something that at first made me wish I'd been born just a little later so I could have gone to high school in the 80s. Of course, I eventually realized that in a world where Alex P. Keaton was cool, I'd have been Skippy Handelman. Hip to be square will spend two weeks at number three beginning December 6th. And finally, Billy Idol's To Be a Lover will reach number 10 on December 6th. Turning to big new album releases in the fourth quarter, in October came the self-titled debut of the Georgia Satellites. This album, like a lot of debut albums, will take a while to catch on. It will eventually peak at number 5 on February 28, 1987. On October 20th came the release of Every Breath You Take, The Singles by The Police. It was a greatest hits package just in time for the holidays and included one new reunion recording, Don't Stand So Close to Me, 86. The biggest release of the holiday season came on November 10th with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band Live, 1975 to 1985. It was the first official live album by Bruce Springsteen available on five albums or three CDs. Released on November 15th was License to Ill by the Beastie Boys. It'll hit number one for seven weeks beginning March 7th, 1987. The Robert Cray Band's Strong Persuader was released on November 17th. It'll reach number 13 early in 1987. Duran Duran's Notorious album was released on October 21st and will go to number 12 early in the new year. On December 6th, Life, Love, and Pain by Club Nouveau was released. It'll go to number 6 on April 25th, 1987. Released late in 1986 was By Request, the best of Billy Vera and the Beaters. Their single, At This Moment, had peaked at number 79 in 1981. The single got renewed and widespread attention when it was used as the love theme for Alex P. Keaton and his girlfriend Ellen on Family Ties. Rhino Records saw the demand, getting this album out in time for Christmas and re-releasing the single. The album will reach number 15 and the single will go to number 1 early in 1987. On October 11th came the first show of the 12th season of Saturday Night Live with guest host Sigourney Weaver and musical guest Buster Poindexter. The show opened with Madonna reading a statement apologizing for the poor quality of the last season and taking a cue from the recent twist on Dallas saying the entire season had been a dream, a horrible, horrible dream. The season opened with an almost entirely new cast. Returning were A. Whitney Brown and Dennis Miller for the Weekend Update segment, and performing members Nora Dunn and John Lovitz, with his recurring characters Master Thespian and the prevaricating Tommy Finnegan with his catchphrase, Yeah, that's the ticket! New cast members included Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Dana Carvey, Victoria Jackson, and Kevin Nealon. On tonight's show, Carvey premiered a new character, The Church Lady. Four nights later, on Wednesday, October 15th, the audition episode of the NBC sitcom You Again aired. As discussed earlier, the short-lived series starred Jack Klugman as Henry Willows and John Stamos as Matt Willows. Tonight's episode centered around a guest appearance that the Beach Boys had taped back on September 29th. 
As our story opens, young Matt, who is studying music in college, has some amazing news for his dad, Henry. The Beach Boys are in town playing a benefit for Just Say No to Drugs, and their drummer, Mike Kowalski, has broken his wrist. They've decided it would be good promotion to hire a kid from the college music department to fill in. Ten kids are auditioning. Will Matt maybe get the gig? Cut to the audition on the campus of Long Island Community College. Matt meets the Beach Boys and even exchanges a bit of comedy shtick with Mike Kowalski. I like the fact that they refer to him by name instead of just calling him the Beach Boys drummer and give him a little bit of screen time. Matt auditions, playing the opening of California Girls, and of course, nails it. In all the footage with the Beach Boys, John Stamos gets the bulk of the close-ups which I suppose is fair since it's his show, his character's story, and let's face it, he's the most photogenic. After some unrelated subplot eats up a bit of time, we come to the night of the concert. We join California Girls already in progress. Al then introduces our newest single, California Dreamin'. Say what you will about the record, it's nice to have the group introducing a new single instead of just sticking to the oldies. Mike mimes the sax solo. After they wind up California Dreamin', we get a John Stamos drum solo followed by the finale, Surfin' USA. Of course, Matt is a smash and his dad, Henry, is justifiably proud, even displaying an autographed poster at his office, which gives a little bit of product placement for Made in USA, albeit with a featuring Matt Willows sticker plastered across it. Matt is even asked to audition to join the Beach Boys on tour. Improbably, just before the audition, Brian arrives with new arrangements, and Matt is the only one raising concerns. Brian tells Matt that they've got to keep it fresh. Faced with unfamiliar arrangements, Matt fails miserably. Could the new arrangements have been some Machiavellian ruse to see if Matt is adaptable and versatile? Maybe if David Mamet had written the episode, but as it is, I don't think so. Anyway, Matt later realizes that he did well in the songs he knew, but couldn't read music well enough to handle new arrangements, so he's going to stay in college and continue his music studies. Roll the credits, which nicely give also starring credits to both Mike Kowalski and Bobby Figueroa, who appeared even more fleetingly than Kowalski. It's a kind of fun episode and far from being the most ridiculously contrived Beach Boy television series appearance. The series You Again will end just 12 weeks later and be largely forgotten. Of course, it's not the last time the Beach Boys will appear on a John Stamos TV series. That'll do it for this time. Next time, we will have one more episode to wrap up our look at 1986. Meanwhile, I look forward to your comments on this. Please hit like if you don't mind. Subscribe if you haven't. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.